Ken Jeong, and I'm your celebrity substitute. Hi, my name is Hannah Healy, and I am a biology teacher in Crystal River, Florida. How could your food uncook itself? Hmm. As a biology teacher, I think a lot about transformations, but to explain how a cooked meal could magically uncook itself, you're going to need to understand cellular respiration. And because teaching from home can be really hard, I am so glad to have a celebrity substitute to teach today's lesson. We already taught one great class together, and I'm looking forward to welcoming back comedian Ken Jong. Hey, Hannah. Hey, Ken. How are you today? Thank you so much for having me again. I mean, that previous lesson was so much fun. For sure. I think the kids are really going to have a better understanding of the digestive system. And they saw a celebrity eat a cookie. Both very important educational tools. So, uh, you're welcome. Yeah. 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 We just talked you through how the digestive system functions. To understand that, check out my lesson about the human body systems. Now, how exactly does the process of digestion work on a micro level? And the answer is cellular respiration. So let's get into it. We all know that the point of eating is to power our bodies. But what do our bodies do to the food in order to get the energy from it? How does food get broken down into the power your body needs? I actually, Hannah, um, could you grab those two bowls of oatmeal? Because I mean, I, I don't have any here because I, I don't eat healthy. When you chew food, you break it down into a mush kind of like the bowl of oatmeal that Hannah has in front of her. Then digestive enzymes break it down even further into its component pieces. Earlier today, Hannah mixed some digestive enzymes, the same molecules that help process food in your stomach, into one of those oatmeal bowls. And this is what's happening inside you. So as you can see, without the enzymes, the one bowl of oatmeal stayed whole, but in the bowl with the enzymes, they broke it back down into water and oats. Ta-da! But at this point, your body isn't done uncooking your food yet. A similar process has to happen at the molecular level, breaking down bigger molecules into smaller pieces and releasing the chemical energy your body can use to power its cells. And that process that we're about to discuss is called cellular respiration. Oh, so you know what that bell means? That means it's time to take a look at our newest student in the gifted and talented program, you. I'm sorry, I'm, so, I'm just so honored. I, um, whew. I'm so sorry. I just thank you so much. I just, a lot of people look at me online and they're like, he's gifted. And I'm like, the story. And then they're just like, what about my talents? You don't see any of my talents in the gift. You are talented. I guess I'm expelling my own energy right now, which is cellular respiration. Dig it. <laughs> okay, so you've chewed up and eaten your food. The enzymes in your stomach have broken it down the same way we watched them dissolve that bowl of oatmeal. But we're still left with sugar molecules, glucose to be precise, that are too big for your body to use as fuel. And they've got to be uncooked even further. And that, so sorry, I think my kids are playing piano. Yes. Oh, wow, they're killing it. I'm just going to text my kids right now. And that is where cellular respiration comes in because cellular respiration converts glucose into energy. And that is how every living thing on the planet stays alive. You're doing cellular respiration right now. So is the dog down the street and the bacteria on the bottom of your shoes. In cellular respiration, we start out with one of those big glucose molecules and use oxygen and we end up with carbon dioxide, water, and the energy your cells use to do literally everything that keeps you alive. And to show you what that process looks like while I explain how cellular respiration works, Hannah's going to get some yeast doing cellular respiration right in front of us. I've got three bottles here filled with yeast and water inside. I'm actually going to be placing sugar in two of them. A lot of sugar in this first bottle. Just a little bit in this one. 
And then this third one is our control, so we won't be adding any sugar to him. But because you can't have cellular respiration without sugar, only these two bottles will actually have cellular respiration occurring. So by the time I'm finished explaining the steps of cellular respiration, those two balloons are going to be inflated full of carbon dioxide. And that's how we'll know cellular respiration has occurred. So how does cellular respiration help us uncook a sugar into even smaller parts? And how is that going to produce the carbon dioxide that's going to magically inflate those balloons? To understand that, let's get deep into the stages of cellular respiration. Cellular respiration is made up of glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain. And anyone who knows me knows I love a good mnemonic. So I remember the cellular respiration stages by the phrase, good, Ken can eat that cookie. And it's true, I can, because I know my body's gonna run cellular respiration. Okay, so let's just say I was good and I did eat that cookie. Well, my body breaks it down into its parts and I'm left with some molecules of glucose. For cellular respiration, we've got glucose from that cookie I ate and some oxygen that I breathed, and they're gonna enter stage one of cellular respiration, glycolysis. In glycolysis, a single glucose molecule from my cookie is split apart into two smaller molecules, and in the process, two ATP are released. ATP, or adenosine triphosphate, is the whole point of all of this. It's the point of eating, it's the point of cellular respiration. It is chemical energy, broken down small enough that your cells can actually use it. So we're trying to make as much of this as we can. And so far, we've got two. At the end of stage one, we've released two ATP, and our glucose has been broken down into two even smaller molecules. So far, all the action has been taking place in a part of the cell called the cytoplasm. That's basically the goo of the cell. Stages two and three, the whole rest of the cellular respiration process, are gonna take place inside the mitochondria. And that's why they're called the powerhouses because we're about to unlock a whole lot more ATP. We're about to enter stage two, the Krebs cycle, or in my mnemonic, can can. There you go. By the time we get to the Krebs cycle, the glucose from our cookie has already been split apart and then oxidized into acetyl-CoA. At every step of the way, we're trying to break down into smaller and smaller molecules and release energy that your cells can use. Acetyl-CoA is smaller than glucose, and I bet you can predict what's gonna happen next. That's right, acetyl-CoA is going to get broken down even smaller. And in the process, we create two more ATP. Now, we reach the third and final stage of cellular respiration, the boss level, the electron transport chain. Or, going back to my mnemonic, we're now at eat that cookie. And you have to say it just like that. This is where all the rest of the energy is cashed in. Using an enzyme called ATP synthase to speed things along, the electron transport chain starts raining ATP. We can make as many as 32 molecules of ATP during the electron transport chain. And that's where we started with the one molecule of glucose from my cookie. Now we're left with 36 ATPs worth of energy for my cells to use, along with some water and some carbon dioxide for me to exhale. And exhaling carbon dioxide is exactly what our single-celled friends, the yeast, have been doing this whole time in the bottles Hannah has set up. So let's go back and check in with them. Hannah, what's been happening? Ken, check this out. This is incredible. Wow. Look at that. In, in the bottles with sugar, the yeast went to town and used cellular respiration to break it down into water and carbon dioxide, which is what's filling the balloons. More sugar, more cellular respiration, more carbon dioxide, and a bigger balloon. No sugar, no respiration, no balloon inflation. So how can your food uncook itself? Cooking, if you think about it, is the art of putting together ingredients and making something complex. Digestion is taking that complex meal and breaking it down into its simplest component parts. Your body uses enzymes and cellular respiration to break food back down into its basic building blocks and unleash ATP. And along the way, it releases water, 
carbon dioxide, which allowed our balloons to inflate themselves. So I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration Hannah has set up using yeast and showing cellular respiration. I hope I wasn't too talkative. I don't want to leave you deflated. Deflated. I'm sorry, guys. There's nothing more I can do with that joke. That joke was the no sugar joke. That was a control. So Hannah, if you didn't laugh, that was the point. Science, dig it, respiration, gas. YouTube learning. Class is over and you did great. You wanna get some extra credit? Hit the subscribe button so you'll never miss a celebrity substitute lesson right here on YouTube.